With any luck, this will be the final instalment of our look at the new features of Darktable 4.8. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 143 of Understanding Darktable. I was on such a roll with 141 and 142, and literally within 24 hours of me recording episode 142, something happened. There must have been a system update or something that happened on my Linux system, and Darktable basically just started crashing within 15 seconds of every launch. And I went on to the forum at pixels.us and amongst all of the people who helped out, uh, Kofa was the one who helped me track it down. It turned out to be a line of code in the Darktable RC file. Uh, so many thanks to Kofa for helping me to get back up and running. So let's get on with the new features of Darktable 4.8. Next on the list, using right click on color label icons at the bottom toolbar of the light table, it is possible to add a description to color labels. This is a handy way of remembering the color label usage in the workflow. So this is an interesting one because obviously, yeah, as it suggests in the release notes there, the way you use color labels tends to be short term. So you might be working on a large project, but within that large project, you maybe want to select a subset of images that, you know, maybe you're going to print them, or maybe they're going to be rendered at a certain size or at a certain aspect ratio for some particular device. So the idea here is that you can come down to the color icons at the bottom of the light table, right click, and you get this little text field and maybe I'll go model shoots and I could then just go through, select all of the images that were model shoots and you get the idea. And I could then go F1 to mark all of those red. And if I then wanted to see just those images, I can filter by those images. But the tool tip that pops up amongst other things, telling you that it's red, it's F1. It also has that text description that these were model shoots. So yeah, that's a handy little feature. Added a few more EXIF fields to the image information module, white balance, exposure program, flash and metering mode. These get filled automatically for new imports. For existing photos, please perform a refresh EXIF on the selected images. So if I look at this image here, which was the one of the most recent images shot out of that group of images that I'm currently looking at, we should see within the image information, uh, metering mode, multi-segment, white balance, wherever you are, daylight, there we go. So yeah, so there's those extra fields of metadata that are in the images now. But if I was to go back to an earlier image, like my image of the volcano on uh, Mount Yasser in uh, Vanuatu, uh, that sort of information isn't there. So we can see exposure program, white balance, metering mode, no information there. In order to refresh the EXIF metadata, what you do is come over to the Actions on Selection module, what used to be called the Selected Images module, click on the Metadata tab, and then click on Refresh EXIF. And now if we have a look at that image, go to the Image Info, we can see Metering Mode, Multi-Segment, White Balance Auto, etc etc so that information has now been updated and you could do that with all of your images if you needed to okay next up color picker positions are defined by image coordinates instead of output they will stay at the same location whatever distorting modules are used for this one i've got this image from brisbane where i have used the rotate and perspective module to correct for a little bit of rotation and for some collapsing verticals that were happening because of the wide angle lens that I was shooting with. So this building looked like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So that is a distorting module. 
And if we were to go to the color picker, grab our little icon here, and you know, we could click anywhere on this image. Let's say we clicked a blue up here by the top of the building, and we can add that. If I was to turn off the rotate and perspective module, you will notice that that color picker remains at the same pixel coordinates of the original pixel location. Previously, that would have shifted the location of the color picker crosshairs because of the removal of the perspective correction. So that seems like a smart addition to the program. Next up, improved efficiency of the quick access panel by allowing modules to be reset and presets to be applied without opening the full module. Added more controls by default to further reduce the need to leave the panel while editing. All right, so if we jump into an image here and we go to the quick access panel, you will see that there is now a hamburger menu for presets on each condensed version of the module within the quick access panel, along with a reset button as well. So that's pretty good because quite often you'll have saved presets for certain modules. And if they are the modules that you've got in the quick access panel, then it makes sense that you would want to be able to access those presets. Added more collection types and filters for flash, white balance, exposure program, metering mode, and image grouping. So some of that refers to the added exa fields that we spoke about earlier. And it means that you can use that metadata to create a collection. So what I've just done is selected all of these 101 images that I'm working on for a project and I've refreshed all of the metadata for them. So now I could go all, we wanna narrow down this search and I want to use something like the, well, let's go the white balance. And let's say I wanna find all the images that were shot with a cloudy white balance. And there we go, that's it. That is awesome. I love the idea of more metadata because this stuff just makes finding images that much easier. I love it. Now, part of that one is also removed the old image grouping collection type and filter, which gave confusing results. But if, say for example, I was to take these four images, which are all part of one particular shoot, and group them together with Control G. I could also do that through the Actions on Selection module by clicking on the Group button. I could now go, I wanna narrow down this search. I wanna go by Group, which is down here. And there is that one group of four images. I can double click on that. And that then filters my collection down to just those four images. Sadly, if I remove that text, that is not enough to take me back to my unfiltered collection. I actually need to remove this rule completely in order to get back to the, the entire collection. Whether that's a bug or an intended use, I don't know, but just be aware of that. Next up, added support for CMYK profiled histogram. Now, CMYK, for those who've not delved into it, is all about color profiles when actually printing. And when I say printing, I mean professional printing, not the sort of stuff you do at home on an inkjet printer, but actual four color process printing. Now, I've never seen any indication that Darktable supported CMYK. There's nothing in the export module that I can see under profile. There's nothing here that says CMYK and intent is something different. And I've been through all the different views of the histogram here and I cannot see any reference to CMYK. So I'm not exactly sure what that's going on about. Maybe it's an indication of something that's coming down the track in the next version of Darktable, who knows? And the last thing on the other new features, the map view can now be scrolled with the arrow keys, left, right, up and down in small steps and in combination with the control key for bigger steps. And again, 
I don't have the facility to get into the maps module at this moment in time. So I'll just have to pass on that. Alrighty, so that is my condensed take on the new features for Darktable 4.8. But before we go, I do want to uh, address this comment that Dean Howarth left on the episode 141 comments. And this was in relation to the composite module, which I was a little bit skeptical of, but Dean came up with a really interesting potential use case. He said, let's say you've got a sunrise seascape composition that you shot two bracketed exposures of, one dark one to protect the sky's highlights and one light one to raise the shoreline's shadow detail. Up to now, the common practice has been to export the two separate processed images and blend them as layers in GIMP or some such using luminosity masks. This module looks to me like it could do all of that within Darktable. Process each exposure for its desired qualities, then drop the lighter one onto the darker one. Use difference blend mode to aid alignment if necessary, then parametric masking to allow only the sky onto the background image of the shore. Does that sound realistic? Wow, that sounds awesome. Let me go and grab a couple of images where I've shot bracketed exposures and let's give that a try. Okay, gonna have to be quick because my lights just ran out of power and I've given them a quick 10 minutes of charge and hopefully they'll hold out. I've got two images here that I shot on a beach in Portimao at the south coast of Portugal. And as you can see, bracketed exposures, one very light to bring up the detail of the rocks and one a bit darker to expose for the sky and the beach in the background. So if we find our composite module and we drop the bright image onto the top of the darker image, we go parametric, oh, one light just died. Okay, hopefully this will just get me through. What I'm thinking for the lighter image, we want everything except the blues. So let's highlight the blues like so, and then invert that. Yeah, that's a good start. And let's have a look at the mask. Yeah, that's a pretty good mask. So really, we probably just want to bring down the opacity. Okay, so it's still clipping a bit in the bright areas there. There's a part of me that wants to push it to the right because I feel like the histogram should extend the full range. But if I do that, then we sort of fall back into the realms of unbelievability because the the inside of this becomes a bit too light for where it really should be. Oh, and also we're really clipping. Hang on, I didn't look at the mode, did I? Let's try, let's try lightness maybe. Ooh, ooh, that looks better. Uh, let's just try dropping that opacity. Dean, I think you might be onto something, mate. That's pretty cool. I mean, there's still work to be done on that, but for a quick couple of minutes experiment, like to have gone from that's the dark frame image to that where the blues, I don't think the blue has shifted. It's a bit hard to tell because flicking it on and off makes your eyes readapt to this area here, but I, I don't think the blue has shifted. There's still some issues with the sand and the people on the sand. That's certainly something you could work with. The, yeah, you could probably do some more tweaking to that. But yeah, I think that you're onto something, Dean. You could certainly uh, pursue that line of inquiry further, definitely. All right, guys, before this other light dies on me, I will wrap it up there and say thank you for your continued support. I haven't said it for a long time, but thank you to my patrons for their continued support. And uh, questions, comments, sing out down below, and I'll catch you in the next one.